Hey YouTubers, Breakaway Homesteader here. Tonight I want to talk to you about rabbits and specifically what I'm going to be using rabbits for on my homestead. Now I have three dogs and I feed them a lot of food and uh, it costs a lot of money. So what better way to start the homesteading adventure than to raising our own rabbits to replace their food so not only is it healthier for them but it's lighter on my pocketbook. Uh, one thing about homesteading is when you're a homesteader you always strive to stretch everything and do everything as natural as possible and uh, uh, as most productive as possible at the, at the cheapest price. Uh, you want to be pretty independent so you want to do things yourself. Uh, again uh, with dog food being nasty from the store um, consisting most of corn products and uh, reprocessed meats and refused meats and and all kinds of nasty stuff that uh, that that uh, that you're feeding your animals. Uh, it's also expensive. So what I'm going to go over is my recipe that I'm going to be using for my dogs. Uh, the reason why I'm switching over to rabbits to show how much I spend per year on dog food for my dogs now, buying store-bought food, and then how much. Um, it'll cost to do all the setup and all the prepping uh, for getting these rabbits onto the homestead and I think you'll be surprised at the savings uh, but one little disclaimer if you're a homesteader nothing's cheap uh, the reason why it's not cheap is because your startup costs will always be uh, larger than what you would spend over the course of a year and so building rabbit hutches and doing things like that will cost more initially in the beginning but the ultimate goal is to either be totally self-sustainable uh, or uh, to do it at a, at a substantially cheaper rate so we're going to do that now I'm going to go ahead and get on my computer screen here which you have access to see hopefully there's nothing personal on there I don't think there is and we're gonna go ahead and start here so how many rabbits do I need to feed my dog or dogs in my case like I said I have three dogs and uh, right here it shows how much food drive dog food does my dog eat and this is just dry dog food or the amount of food that I plan on feeding my animals in on a daily rate I figured if they're eating a rabbit meal slash food, it'll be more nutritious, but it'll be more lean than the fatty stuff the store gives. So I think it'll be just as good to give as much rabbit food to the dogs as dry dog food. So my dogs are in this range right here, between 30 and 50 pounds. And so personally for myself, for my dogs, I have chosen... Uh, to go with a 24 ounce uh, uh, mason jar. Uh, normally they get two cups, two heaping cups of dry food and a can of wet dog food. Uh, and so I think this area is perfect. I think 24 ounces is perfect. It's a little odd size mason jar, but it's not impossible. So uh, I said I'm going to try this recipe. I uh, I actually made this recipe up according to all the different recipes I've seen and I think this would be the best for our dogs uh, so going cooked or going raw um, yes dogs are related to wolves but they're not wolves they are domesticated dogs that are used to eating what you're used to eating and uh, this the steps of giving a raw animal to something could lead a possibility to some sort of infection or bacterial uh, infection or something like that so why risk it I'm gonna go ahead and cook my food so so I'll be going cook the idea of raw for me is too iffy my dog may be an ancestor to the wolf but he's not a wolf so this is the recipe I'm gonna be using this is just for one can 124 ounce can uh, that I'll be making or, or mason jar so it's gonna consist of one egg a half a cook half a cup of cooked rice uh, a third cup of mixed vegetables one tablespoon to one one teaspoon to one tablespoon of olive oil and then one teaspoon of moringa oliveira so let's go over the olive oil real quick uh, during the 
different times of year it's drier or it's more humid. So the drier times of year, drier times of the year, your dogs are going to scratch more. The skin's going to be drier. It's best to give them more olive oil to help them with that dry skin issue. Uh, so moringa olifera. I'm not going to go over the details of moringa, but it is a miracle plant slash tree that my entire family takes. Uh, if you want more information, you can go to the Big Family Homestead and get with Brad. Uh, he's got several videos on Moringa and how it's helped him. It's helped my family, and we will never, ever go a day without Moringa. Like I said, I give it to my dogs, and I take it myself. My wife takes it. My kid takes it. Everybody in this family takes it. So one day when I can actually grow it, because I live in North Carolina, maybe I'll give it to my chickens and rabbits and whatnot see what that does so with that and the carcass a clean dress carcass of a rabbit uh, it'll make roughly 24 ounces or three cups of food for my dog uh, for the rabbit itself it'll be clean the feet will be cut off the head will be cut off and the entire rabbit including the bones and the, the organs uh, will be ground into a uh, uh, a ground meat slash ground uh, bones and it'll be ground twice and so it'll be really super fine so none of the bones are going to hurt the dogs or anything like that we cook it it's not going to hurt the dogs either uh, so it's kind of like a rabbit meal I'll call it a rabbit meal so all that together will roughly make um, 24 ounce jar of food um, or more depending on the size of the rabbit so note for these recipes and for any recipes if you plan on feeding your dogs anything uh, no seasonings ever uh, they don't need salt like we need salt uh, they will get natural salt through their food and that's all they need they don't need any more salt than than, than what's already in it make sure there's no onions or no garlic ever and I'll repeat that, no onions or no garlic ever. Uh, the reason why is because it's deadly and poisonous to, to dogs. They don't process it like we process it. So I'm going to blend all the, the blend this meat mixture into in a uh, uh, meat mixer. It's a, basically a, a 20 pound uh, vat. Yeah, let me bring it up here, uh, right here, I think, yep. So this is a 20 pound vat. And inside here, there's a big auger. And what it's going to do is blend that meat, the vegetables, the rice, everything else inside that together. Excuse me. So it's going to blend it all together. That way it's, it's incorporated into the product. And so when I raw pack it into the 24-ounce mason jar, uh, it'll be thoroughly mixed. Because when it cooks down, it'll make a, it'll, it's going to pretty much make a loaf inside the can itself kind of like the loaves that you get in, in can, canned dog foods at the store so that's what I'm going to get it is a little pricey so 136 this has got four stars this is the second cheapest one I found but the first cheapest one I found was like 89 bucks and it was it was like two and a half stars so this is pretty mediocre I'm not going to go overboard but whenever you buy things for your homestead you want it to last and you don't want the cheapest product either uh, so I went mid-range on this if it works out for me I will probably end up later down the road uh, building an outdoor kitchen and getting a more uh, industrial meat mixer so let's go back here real quick so we're gonna put those in those 24 ounce jars and then we're gonna can according to our elevation and we're canning meat so you make sure that you're canning meat according to your elevation inside a pressure cooker this is not a water bath boiler this is not a steamer uh, canner this is a pressure canner uh, some quick notes on some some uh, uh, meat rabbit rabbit meat here uh, if you want more details on rabbits again you can go over to big family homestead you can look up Brad's uh, information about rabbits. He goes over all the reproductive, everything of rabbits, and how how many you can get out of a rabbit, everything like that. So just real quick 
what I've got here is one doe will produce 140 pounds of meat per year. And with the bones, it'll be 193 pounds of meat or meal. So one doe can make 193 jars of dog food for your dog. So roughly two does producing for your dog will not only feed your animal for the year, but there will be extra for storage because you'll want an extra storage uh, for your dogs just in case. Just in case. Shelf life of this will be this particular food will be three years. I want to play it safe. Three years is good for canning as long as it's in a uh, a cool, dry spot and there's no sun hitting it and it's dark. It should be good to go. So, second part here. Cost to feed the dogs. So, as I said, I feed three dogs from commercial dog food. Uh, I don't even go high end on it. Uh, I go pretty much down the middle. So, uh, I use Beneful dog food uh, for my dry dog food. And a 40 pound bag costs $33.98. And I go through about 13 of these bags per year. So the cost of that is $441.74. Now wet dog food, I go a little cheap around this. I usually get the old Roy. I don't go as low as going to gravy train because that's just like, why buy the cheapest item? You know, it's going to be the worst item. Uh, so I go a little higher up. I get old Roy instead of uh, gravy train. But it's three cans a day for 365 days. That's 1,095 cans per year. That's a lot of junk. That's a lot of garbage. That's a lot of refuse that uh, you need to strive towards not uh, producing. Uh, as a homesteader, you're going to be as self-reliant as possible. If you can use the cans, if you want to make a solar heater or use them for your gardening or something like that, uh, I'm not into that, but if you are, go for it. Uh, but I wouldn't want to make a solar heater out of dog food cans anyway because I don't want dog food heat coming out of those vents. Not a, not a pleasant smell because it will stick into the film of those cans. So there's 12 cans per pack of dog food. And so multiplying that, uh, I get 91.25 cases of dog food. So I brought that number up, 92 cases of dog food total. And that 92 cases will cost a total of $641.24. So the total dog food for one year, and this is mediocre, this isn't high end, is $1,083.18. That's a lot of money to be spending just on dogs. Um, I, I treat my dogs, I mean they're my best friends as far as they, they are, but they're also dogs themselves uh, they're not above my family uh, but they they are a part of my family but they are not at the level of my wife or my kid so they do serve a purpose they protect my house and uh, and make sure that we're safe uh, while we're in the home so one thousand eighty three dollars and eighteen cents now what would it cost to start up a small rapid tree to feed those dogs to uh, maintain or replace their food uh, and that would be this this item right here so your initial cost rabbits let's say you get three does and one buck that's a good place to start um, so that's four rabbit cages that you're going to need to build or or buy uh, for your hutch you can get uh, a pretty good size hutch at tractor supplier or any other place they're going to be wire cages uh, base price is about 30 bucks this will hold uh, one rabbit comfortably for your purpose because these are meat rabbits these aren't um, pet rabbits but you want to consider treating your does and bucks that are breeding a little bit better than the actual stock they're going to be providing for you because they will be around a little bit longer so the more comfortable you make them the better they'll produce so here's an example of of what I'm going to be building uh, it's not going to be exactly like this I'm not going to have a little poop shoot or anything like that but the person who built this said it cost about $400 to build uh, he used some pretty good product for it 
so I'm considering that this would cost me maybe 250 to 300 dollars uh, to produce and we'll find out soon uh, but I've got to do some schematics and, and do something similar to this but I got my own tweaks and peaks because when you're going to go invest your time and invest your money and time is more valuable than money um, you need to make sure to do it right the first time and prepare for uh, all situations now and in the future so if you expand what's going to happen here are you going to be able to divide it even more if you have to um, so prepare for the future and I'm going to say between 250 and 300 bucks I can make something like this similar but I've got to design it and then once I design it I will build it and I'll make sure to include you guys on that so you can either buy it at a store or build it yourself. I prefer building because it usually lasts longer. Everything at the store these days is staple. Uh, here, this can be uh, screwed together and it'll last substantially longer. Uh, don't go cheap, cheap. Don't be going going uh, to Home Depot and buying your particle board to work its boards here because within a couple of years, those will fall apart. And you want your investment to stand t stand the uh, length of time that you're going to need it for. And since I'm replacing my dog's food, it's going to be consistent. So, down here, waterers times four, $32. Uh, rabbit food, a 20-pound bag of rabbit food. I'm sorry, a 50-pound bag of rabbit food will cost 20 bucks. So, roughly from birth to eight months... Yeah, uh, each rabbit that you raise will consume roughly five pounds of a rabbit food. So you're getting your bang for your buck, that's for sure. Hay is optional. You don't have to feed them hay. However, comma, you should uh, try to treat your animals with a little respect. Uh, the whole point of husbandry is not only to be um, a companion to your family, but a companion to your animals as well. Yeah, you're providing them a service and they're providing you a service. Ultimately, they're going to give up their life to sustain you, or in my case, my pets, which are a little bit higher up on the food chain. And uh, the purpose is to cut the cost down for me and, and be more one with nature. So treat your animals the way they should be treated. So we're going to go into here, jars. Uh, I found a uh, online... Uh, supplier of jars for a dollar thirty-eight per twenty-four ounce jar, and they're we weird looking jars. Uh, let me see if I got it. I think I got it up here. Oh, yeah, but they're weird looking jars. They're long. They're tall. They look like a big uh, beer can. I don't know how else to explain it. Uh, so they're about that, that that big around, wide mouth jar, and about that tall. And so you can see that right here so what I've got the numbers I have here is 108 and the reason why it's 108 is because it's the jar amount is going to go a week above uh, the number of jars I need for one month supply so it'll, when I make it it'll be one month supply plus a week so by the time that next month rolls around uh, pending whether it goes left or right a few days I will have enough food left over to continue to uh, not only stock but to uh, feed my animals just in case something happens. The weather could be bad. This is part of planning. This is part of homesteading. You need to look ahead into the future and prepare. That's the word. Prepare yourself for something that may or may not happen. So meat grinder. Oh. Uh, you can get a decent meat grinder. You're not looking for anything high end. You're just grinding up uh, uh, rabbit carcasses. Um, something substantial. You you'll want it to have have enough power to be able to grind meat and bones, which won't be that hard because you're going to grind it twice. Uh, but a meat grinder will cost you around 75 bucks. If you're spending more than that, you kind of waste your money because this is a single purpose thing. Unless you plan on uh, getting a really nice one that's going to last forever, maybe look for a, a warranty or something like that, I wouldn't spend more than 75 bucks. Food mixer. We just looked at that. Uh, 150 bucks is the range around there. I'm spending a little less because I, I'm getting a mid-range. 
uh, they go all the way up to like 400 bucks. So I'm getting, I think I'm getting a decent one that mixes 20 pounds of food at a time. Uh, I think we'll go with that. Uh, pressure counting, uh, depending on what you get. Uh, a good used pressure counter on eBay, an all-American pressure counter, will go for 150 bucks. Uh, you don't want, okay, I have a Presto canner, and I'm, I, I hate admitting that, but a relative bought me uh, the Presto canner for, as a gift. I don't know if it's a Christmas present or a birthday present, and I use it, don't get me wrong, and it's great, but it's got a rubber seal gasket on the top, and uh, eventually that's going to fail. So being a prepper and a homesteader, I'm looking towards the future. I didn't have to buy that pressure counter, so I'm good for now. But when I do buy a new pressure counter, it'll be all American. because It's got the clamps on the outside, and it's metal on metal. And so it will never fail, uh, per se. Uh, I mean, a gauge might go out or whatnot, but that's replaceable. You think about the future, you have gauges on standby just in case that happens. So the total of everything to get started including rabbits it's one thousand seventy dollars and in the beginning it's gonna cost a little more because you're gonna to have to feed your dogs while you're getting this all set up and while while the rabbits are growing the initial eight weeks uh, you'll be feeding your dogs so it is higher than that uh, but not much higher than the actual cost of your store-bought food and so that's substantial. And doing this on the homestead, you got to think about what's it going to cost the next year? What's it going to cost the year after that? Once you get the value out of your items, your pressure canner, your meat grinder, your, your food mixer, uh, you're going to find that uh, that cost gets lower and lower as time goes on and as you maintain that equipment. So the following year, you know, take away all this all this extra stuff uh, so you got 80 bucks for rabbits and you can continually rotate those rabbits because females can be bred with their uh, kin and so when it's time for a new doe you can just continuously cycle a new doe with the same buck so think about what it's going to be in the future and it'll be roughly be if you think about it with supplies and everything like that maintenance maybe two or three hundred bucks a month if you even cut this in half and let's say you pay six pay six hundred bucks a month or five hundred bucks a month that is six hundred bucks in your pocket what can you do with six hundred dollars you know if you're a failed gardener and you can't make stuff grow maybe that six hundred dollars can go into your garden next year to where you go out and buy bonnie plants or some plants from your local gardener picking up plants for them from them and putting them in your garden and all of a sudden you're a successful gardener you, your crops produce and they produce bountifully and you take it to the local farmers market or something like that it actually comes back to you uh, because you save that money to get that so benefits of raising rabbits uh, not only are they going to sustain you with food you can keep their furs I'm not into that I'm not, I'm not there yet as a homesteader. I've only been homesteading for four months. What else? Um, manure. Rabbit manure is not a burnable manure. You can put it directly into your garden, and it's fantastic for growing plants. And so, like me, I have all sandy soil. So not only are they going to be producing meat with, for my dogs, but they're also going to be producing fertilizer for my garden. They're going to be creating that hummus be put into the dirt to separate the sand particles and so it'll retain more moisture and grow better food so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was informative for you if you ever decide to use rabbits for for dog food uh, you could use my recipe hopefully it's good if you really enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up uh, and if you want to see more content like it uh, be sure uh, to subscribe to my channel because there's more content to come. I'll have the links in the description for the Big Family Homestead for those other videos I was talking about. And be sure to check them out. Give them a thumbs up as well. It helps them out. And 
Uh, this is Patrick of the Breakaway Homesteader signing off. Have a good night.